Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. Um, I'm here, Matt Cantu Snell. Uh, my badge says Matt Snell. The schedule said Matt Cantu. I have both last names. So uh, I'm also really excited to um, present this um, Chaos Diversity and Inclusion Open Source Badging Initiative with you today. So let's start by talking about the people. Um, Ruth was not able to make it today, but she, she provided a lot of the information for this presentation, so I wanted to keep her on there. She's a founding member of Chaos Badging. Uh, she works as a technical content man manager at a company called Animals, is a GitHub star, and loves to eat cake. Now me, myself, Matt Cantu Snell, I am a founding member of Chaos Badging as well. I'm a graduate assistant at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. And uh, I'm a fan of chaos since um, 2018. Summer of 2018 is when I started. And I love to build. I like to build speakers, keyboards, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so you, did we talk about chaos a little bit. Uh, let me talk about that. It's Community Health Analytics Open Source Software. That is a company that kicked off at the op this Open Source Summit in North America in 2017. We have multiple working groups, such as diversity, equity, and inclusion, risk, we have, um, we, have, we have an evolution working group, all kinds of things that we can use to measure open source project health. We have over 50 distinct metrics. These are all windows at which we can view a project to understand the health a little better. And we have relaxed and low structure calls. Every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we have all kinds of calls. Just to mention, our DEI call is on Wednesdays at uh, well, it, it's a different time everywhere. So we have some, some community-centered initiatives, and one of those initiatives that we like to talk about is the badging initiative. So um, you may ask, what is the badging initiative? Let's talk about the badging initiative. So we have this initiative that we started. Um, we want to make DEI practices feel better for everybody, and we want to improve them in the open source community. We are focused on technical open source events. And a lot of the work that gets done in the project is done by people who want to, um, and, and friends of ours that would really just like to contribute. Um, we, we provide, so an event organizer can apply for a Chaos DEI badge. And then we go through a review process, which I'll explain later, that gets them that badge. And um, let's move forward to talking about the two components of the badging initiative. I just want to reiterate, we have diversity, equity, and inclusion at the Chaos Project. And we have software badging at the DEI badging initiative. Those two come together and um, use metrics to put together a better DEI practice in the event space and open source. So you may be wondering, what are the chaos metrics? What metrics do we use for the badging initiative? And for virtual and in-person events, I'm going to explain a couple of those. For the, for the first one we want to talk about is code of conduct at an event. How does the code of conduct support a better diversity and inclusion practice in the event space? Now, this is, um, this is the one that we see a lot of improvement on as we work through the applications. Um, we have diversity access tickets, which is something that some people don't even know exists, but is very important to having diversity at your event and welcoming people that would not otherwise be able to. And the question is, how do we use those to support those people that, that want to come to the event? We have family friendliness, which is how we get um, situ situations where people would like to bring more people from their family to an event, or need to bring more people to their family to attend the event. And how do we get that to um, event organizers that they need to have that? Attendee demographics and um, speaker demographics are fairly similar, in which we have uh, information collected about the attendees and speakers, and even the volunteers, in a uh, case that I'll mention in the future that we are really looking forward to how that's going to change the um, demographic space at events in, a, in the open source community. I'd like to talk about how metrics hold the badge together. So we have, we have metrics and we have the badges 
but the metrics are the, are the core component to the existence of these badges. So um, you may be wondering, what is the validity of this situation? What, is, what, does the, what has the badging project, the badging initiative done? Now we've had 35 events badged since September of 2020, which was our launch. And just last week, we had, uh, we had quite a few applications from a large event and its co-located events. Um, so, so that number is going to increase dramatically <laughs> over the next few days. And it's also worth mentioning that the open source summit, this open source summit, has earned the gold DEI badge from the Chaos Project. You may be asking, how does this project work? And um, I'm going to pause for just a moment. Do we have any specific questions about how the process works or uh, anything about how the anything about the badging project really um, so far? Go ahead. Sorry. One more time. Sorry. Oh yes, um, yeah. I can go into that in a little bit. That we talk about how the uh, how automation helps the process, but we have to have some real reviewers. Um, we have to have real peer review system, and I'll talk about that in a little bit too. That's a great question. Go ahead. Oh, great question. Yeah. So diversity access tickets. Um, it's Basically, if somebody doesn't have access, the access to get to the event, or doesn't have the um, ability, the, the uh, funds, or the ability to get the ticket, then uh, an event may provide more access to that person through um, giving them free registration, getting, to the, getting them to the event, things like that. And um, that's something that is a requirement for, um, for, for as, as a single metric requirement for the badge, for the DEI badge. Yeah. So let's go into the process. Now, um, we, when, we, when you submit an event for a Chaos Badge, you do it on the website. If you want to find it yourself, it's actually the short URL, chaos.community. Well, maybe not so short. But we have, um, it, it, you may be able to see here that we have in-person and virtual events. Um, the event organizer comes from um, com comes into the website and applies for an in-person or virtual event. They're kind of distinct. The big difference right now is that virtual events um, do not have the family friendliness component or the metric applied to that. Um, but we will have more information on that in, in just a little bit too, how they're going to be differentiated in, an, uh, in, in the future. So they um, fill out the online form. A uh, GitHub issue is created for them, but they use, they use their GitHub account and then click Submit. Everything else is filled in for them and marked down, everything that we need for the, um, for the GitHub issue. And I get, really, it's called an issue, but it's, the, it's just a, a, thing that, a thing to pay attention to. So as in this case, it's an application. So the badging bot, badging-bot is the name of our bot, and it's going to welcome the user and... Um, and assign reviewers algorithmically. And at that point, the badging bot um, has, has done its work, but we'll have it here, we'll have it again in the future. So um, after they provided all this information, so they have, a, they have an application, they have all the information for each metric. We have specific questions for them based on, that, based on those metrics. And the reviewer fills out a review checklist. So in this case, that means um, that, that they, they go down a list of checkable boxes and they check all the boxes that the event meets. Now this is the first step of the review. So there are two reviewers, just to read there are two reviewers for each application. And each, app, each, um, each reviewer fills out their own checklist, which then, if they have any questions, that is, um, we, we always encourage them to ask questions, but if they have any questions, they ask those of the reviewer or of the applicant, and then the, they, and the applicant incorporates that new information maybe on their event website or um, in their event space um, plans. So we have, um, we have kind of a, a feedback process here in which they can get more information. And then um, I also want to mention here in the, in the 
there are two things I want to I want to make clear here too. Is that the first one is that the application for the badge um, is actually something that we should be able to find all the information on the website, really, because that should that information should be publicly available. And the other thing is that we're not looking for the 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 numbers, the 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 demographics. The information about um, who is doing, uh, who is, um, you know, of what type, and in in, no, we don't want any of that. We want to know that the event organizer is working on their practices for their event organization, and that they want to improve the DEI practices, or at least making an effort to. So, the final aspect of this, and um, this picture is actually from the Hyperledger Global Forum application. We have the badging bot, um, we, we provoke it for a result, and then it calculates the, the percentage of how many checks have been met. If it's above 80%, in this case it was 100 with two reviews, which is wonderful. In the, um, and it's, it, it pulls that information, it, and we have to have the applicant accept the result or ask for further deliberation, and then they can work for it in the future. And Generally, we, um, we originally had a one-year kind of roll, roll off period, but we realized that if an event is going to happen, it's going to happen, and once it happens, you, you, know, you can't really use the badge anymore for the, unless, you, unless you have another event and you have another badge for that. The only exception we've made is a like 30-day, events that happen every 30 days uh, or less. So um, let me talk a little bit about what we want to see in the future of uh, Chaos DEI badging. We want a release cycle of six months, which we've been keeping to kind of well. We've had a couple months leeway time. So um, our next release, version three, is coming November 1st, and that's going to be real exciting because we're going to have some new metrics. And uh, our outreach to the open source community, uh, we, we have a separate meeting from the badging meeting. Uh, we have a badging meeting every Wednesday. We have a an outreach meeting every Tuesday. And that outreach meeting, the focus of that is to get more people involved in the badging initiative, because it is a fairly new project, and we'd like to have uh, more people to know about it, uh, both outreach to event organizers and outreach to potential reviewers, which I'll mention in just a moment here. We're increasing the requirements, so that 80% has been met uh, almost every application, so we'd like to talk about um, putting some more requirements in, and that comes through adding new metrics. Uh, and you might be asking yourself, what metrics? And that is a, a really good question. Um, I'll, I'll ask you um, all for some, in, uh, for some suggestions of metrics, but I'm going to talk about the ones we're adding in this next release. So inclusive experience at event. This is an, a, a, an all-inclusion kind of metric to See, how, it's, it's really about how people feel about that event they went to, how inclusive they felt it was, and what kind of gut feeling it gave them. Um, this is something that we, it's going to be hard to measure in a badging initiative, but we're doing our, um, our darndest. So time inclusion for virtual events. How can organizers um, really put together a, an event in a way that is going to be helpful um, to to everybody on the planet in, in, in a way that in any time zone someone would be able to attend and not have to be up at like 1 or 3 a.m. And the last one is kind of a reform of the demographics. So we're talking about attendee and speaker demographics already. But in, we wanted to add volunteer demographics, volunteers for the event. And um, instead of adding another metric for that, we're just going to collapse them all into event demographics, have a and have a, a lot more checks for that event demographic session. It's going to be our, our main metric, uh, really, at that point. And um, at this point, does anybody have any good ideas for, um, for metrics that they might like to see in something like this? Something, uh, something in DEI that you haven't seen at an event before? Go ahead. Or 
Yeah, that's great. We've been working on a metric. Um, it hasn't been released in the past um, in the past release of the chaos metrics, but we've had uh, an event location inclusivity metric that we, that's been focused on that very thing, um, and it, it's it's in the works. Uh, and as soon as it gets finished, we're going to put it in the next release of the badging initiative. So thank you. That's a great suggestion. Do we have any more um, ideas? Go ahead. Yeah, that's that's great. That's something we're just stepping into in the Chaos Project. To be honest, we've talked about um, we've talked about inclusion for individuals experiencing colorblindness in a project. We've uh, we've had a couple other metrics that are related to that, but we haven't had that in the event space. So that's a great suggestion. And um, I'll have more time for suggestions as well soon. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, we are really thankful. There are so many people that have contributed to the badging initiative in the past year and even before that when we were just working on the workflow in a summer of code projects. So I wanted to put the names out there. Uh, these are all the people that have been major contributors to the badging initiative, and it's been wonderful. So I wanted to go over the summer of code. Um, was, uh, was, uh, the summer of code and season of docs are both Google projects that, we can, um, that, we can, that we've learned from. And we've had interns um, throughout. The, well, summer of code happens in the summer. Season of docs happens in the, in the kind of the later part of the year. and. We, uh, I, can, I cannot thank these people enough. They have done pretty much, uh, they've done a lot of work on the project. Um, and we have um, maintainers. These are the people that really do the, um, the, the shepherding along of uh, an application. And uh, assigning reviewers in the case that the bot can't. And doing things like that. Um, and the reviewers, we've got a lot, a lot of reviewers, but with the amount of, Work, uh, the, with the amount of um, applications coming in, we'd always like to get more reviewers because it's always nice to have um, people to, to, to look at that. I mean, the, the more diverse and, um, and open we have our reviewer team, the easier it's going to be to, to, to be helpful to the DEI space for any event organizers. And I um, just wanted to mention upcoming reviews. Kevin's one of them here. <laughs> and uh, I, did, I don't mean to point you out, but <laughs> um, we got some people that were, still tr that were still doing the orientation to be reviewers. And honestly, the orientation is a 30-minute meeting. Um, and then the, the, the kind of the, the ask for being a reviewer is 20, about 20 minutes for, per application. It's more like less than one application per week. Just wanted to mention that. And thank you to everybody who's been a contributor to this project, too. I just I, I wanted to put that out there in case anyone's watching the recording and is part of that or anyone's here and is part of that. Thank you. I mean it, yeah. Um, so I, I just wanted to say it enough. Um, and, and this is the time for suggestions, questions, um, interesting, inter interesting factoids, anything you'd like to, yeah, go ahead, sorry. That's a great question. Um, to start, we do have an organization that's separate from Chaos, but it's really still an initiative of Chaos. Um, we did get the name github.com slash badging, which is really cool. But, um, but I, I think um, as far as the, the separation, uh, the, the new direction for the badging initiative, we are working on, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but at Chaos, we're working on, pro on some kind of project badging that, as well that's going to spe go, go out into the project space. And, um, but as far as event badging goes, we are really um, just excited to um, look at new directions. And I'm trying to think um, if there's anything specific other than making it more, um, the, the requirement's higher to get a badge. Uh, we also want, I guess we don't have a lot of other 
extra things we're doing right now. As far as this next release, it's going to be more metrics as the focus. But once we have all the metrics we need and we're kind of um, slowly moving those metrics in, it's a great thing to look at what's next. So I don't really have a good answer to that question. Go ahead. Yeah, um, the questions we get a lot of the time when it comes to um, when it comes to badging an event, the demographics have kind of been the pain point for people. Um, we have a few people that have um, gotten really good at knowing what we need, and, and they can get an event through in maybe a, a couple days or, or less. But the pain point has been demographics because it's hard with how touchy demographics can be, especially with things like the GDPR regulations in California. It's been difficult to um, ask people to measure demographics and 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 also the other the other thing we ask in the application is, do you request feedback from attendees and speakers regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion at your event? And that um, people people get a little uncomfortable about that, but I think getting uncomfortable can be a good thing here because it gets us getting out of our comfort zone really gets us in a spot where we grow, and not as uh, not only as like event organizers but as people, you know. I hope that was a good answer to your question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, um, so I guess there's something I didn't necessarily cover in the workflow, is that um, we've had people that come, or event organizers that come to the badging initiative and open an issue before they even open an application and say, I don't know what I'm doing here. And um, our, our, what we like to do is, uh, when, that's, when that happens, is we'd like to say, um, let's get someone to talk to you. Let's, get, let's talk about that. Let's, uh, let's work through that and, and figure out how we can get um, but how we can get you this badge? Because we want people to be badged. We want events to be a badge. I mean, and um, the 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 workflow process that I necessarily didn't cover is that if they ask for further deliberation, we can adjust the checklists. I mean, they're they're just check boxes on on GitHub. That that part is easy. It's just that um, a lot of the time we'll ask them to change something, and they will. And that's kind of what we want to see. If they're following best practices of these metrics, we um, we want to see that um, that they're following them, really, necessarily. And um, we def we ha it's a human process outside of the badging bot. It's a very human process, and we like it that way because that that's how um, that's how you can like working with people is really the only way to do DEI. Go ahead. Um, so in the circles that I'm in, there's a lot of discussion about um, how to best collect um, demographic statistics about um, race and gender. Um, because both of those are things that you can collect information about in a lot of different ways. And depending upon the way that you ask, you will get very different results. And also, there's discussion on even if information about those things should be collected in general. Um, so I'm curious to know if there's a specific approach that you endorse to that, or if that's been a, a point that you kind of uh, had to deal with in the past and what you yeah, that's a great question. There's not really a, I mean, there's no standard, of course. There, there are good things like the open, open demographics um, collection. 
And um, what, what I really like to push, we don't have it in the checklist yet. We don't have anything about um, how they measure the demographics, just that they do when they request feedback. That'd be a great thing to add to your light bulb. <laughs> but um, I think um, as far as the, as far as collecting demographics, I think the important things are opt out. You can, you can just prefer not to say, but some kind of opt out. The other thing is allow people to have a text box, <laughs> for goodness sakes. Allow people to put their own thing in if they want to. And maybe even not even suggest specific subsets, but like, what is your race? Text box. What is your gender? Text box. I think that's a great thing to do, but it makes standardization more difficult, but it makes the process a lot more um, human, DEI focused. Go ahead. Yeah, um, originally we asked for a two month lead time for any badge um, application that, 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 that it comes out a little bit, at least a little bit, like two months before their event. But then we had people come and um, apply for a badge for their event in like two weeks beforehand. And we're not, we're not, we're not mad about it. I mean, they, if they get a badge and they, wa they want to get it so soon before the event, I think that's their decision. And I, um, I'm super excited to, to help them with, through that process, even right before, right, right as registration is ending or whatever. Uh, I think it's a great signal, even, if, even without the registration in mind, it's a great signal that that event cares about DEI and is doing something to improve it. I, I, I'm sorry, did I answer your question? Um, yeah, that's a great question. That's a really good question. I do not have any examples of that impact, mostly because the badging initiative has only been around for about a year. I'd like to know, though. I'm gonna, I might start asking people about what, what this, this has done, because we've had a lot of, we've had some people even come back after a year and say, I'd like to get a badge for this next year of this event, and see how that um, impacts um, the future of their event. So it sounds, it's almost like a suggestion in the question. I love it. <laughs> um, if you have no more questions or suggestions, I want to talk about how you can get involved if you'd like. Um, and there is a link there to apply to be a reviewer for the initiative. We have a, um, like a, this isn't the end, by the way. I have more after this, but. <laughs> Um, we, we have a, 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 like a, maybe a 20, 15, 30 minute orientation session that I have with you on like Zoom or Meet or whatever your preferred platform is. And then from there, it's, um, it's just a matter of being able to find things on people's websites, asking questions, everything like that. And then uh, applying for a badge is, um, applying for a badge is for event organizers really, but if you want to help with the workflow, if you want to, um, any kind of contribution is welcome because we try to be an inclusive community ourselves. I mean, if we weren't inclusive, then that would be a really bad thing. <laughs> um, so I have some questions for y'all. Um, I was originally thinking we would do a roundtable discussion, but there's no, there's not a lot of room for that. And um, I'm just going to ask the questions. So what, 
kind of positive DEI experiences have you had at events? I, I'm going I'm to get out. I'm going to get out here. I'd like to be a little more human. Am I still audible? OK. So what kind of positive DEI experiences have you all had at events? That, uh, something that's kind of stood out to you that you has had an impact on you as far as DEI? Go ahead. That's awesome to hear. Yeah, an application can make all the difference. It's normally the, sometimes it's the first point of contact, you know? Yep. Yeah. Do we have any more good stories? Go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Um, I I I, uh, I have to change a question on our on our upcoming <laughs> questions. Uh, we had, do you have gender neutral bathrooms? Now we have to make it are your bathrooms gender neutral? Don't have to, but we are going to make it are your bathrooms gender neutral. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. Um, do we have any more good experiences? Uh, we can move on to the next question too. Go ahead. Yeah, accessibility is uh, absolutely um, something that gets overlooked a lot of the time and, until someone needs it, you know? <laughs> so it's great. Go ahead. I went to a conference in Belgium where they just made all the bathrooms uh, non gender specific. And so men and women were going in and using the bathrooms at the same time. It was awesome. 
That's awesome. Yeah. Um, very much not a thing that would happen here as much, but I, I, I think it can. There's no reason it can't. That's a lot of, the, that's a lot of what um, the DEI badging is built on is why not? Um, why not make it easier and more um, inclusive to attend? Um, and I'm just, um, I'm just, I got the next question. I got, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> By the way, I do, uh, I do, uh, uh, I do identify gen identify as genderqueer and I uh, identify as they them. For anybody who doesn't know, um, I I just don't I just um, don't identify with the gender. So uh, I I really relate. I I don't know um, if my situation is as bad as other people's with gender, but I I I I feel that too. Um, I I don't know. Um, and w let's go on to the next question. I think we're just going to do one more question, and I'll wrap it up. Um, and what today has helped you frame what you think of badging, or what has changed from this presentation on how you, th how you think about badging? Go ahead. Thank you. And oh, go ahead. Um, that's that's a big one for me too. Um, that's a something being at the badging program from the start has really had um, an impact on the way I think about how metrics can be used too. Um, so we have these these before we had the badging we had these DEI metrics we had these this this repository basically of metrics for diversity equity and inclusion but what are we going to do with them? Um, we didn't have anybody consuming them really as much as um, looking at them and saying, that's cool, that's good awareness. But like, where do you move from awareness to action, you know? Um, it's, it's just, um, I think that's a great point. Um, it's definitely where my mind's been lately too, kind of, a, kind of thinking, wow, it's been a year and um, it's completely changed my perspective on a lot of things. Um, we can have like one more uh, maybe, or um, and then I'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, so I just, um, I just wanted to, to, to thank you all for coming here too. Be and I know that's cliche, but like, I really want to thank you all for coming here too, because, um, the badging initiative wouldn't mean anything if nobody, if nobody looked at it, if, if it was, if it was in a vacuum and all those badges were just there, there would, there would be no signal, there would be no human aspect of it and, and y'all are the human aspect of it especially in person <laughs> and I'm just really I'm just really glad to see that so many people are interested in um, this this little project that started a year ago I don't know um, and it just means the world to me um, so thank you for coming and I think that's it